I've received a request asking if I can demonstrate how to create a correction curve and measure those patches using a data color spider print but using the Windows operating system. So today I'm going to create a correction curve for this Marat paper and this is 280 gram Varieta paper. So I'm going to create the correction curve in Photoshop on the Mac but the principle is the same on Windows if you're using the Photoshop Windows version. But the difference is I'm going to create actually create the measurements or take the measurements inside of Windows 11 because that's what I've been asked to do. So let's start by creating the correction curve profile. Before we can make the correction curve we have to print the step wedge, let it dry and then we're going to measure that with the data color spider print. So I've got the paper grey curves plugin open and I need to create a paper profile. So I'm going to click the add and for the profile name you can you can name this whatever you want to name it. But I'm going to name it the type of paper. So it's actually called Marat and this one is 280 GSM Varieta. So that's what I'm going to name it. So that's the name of the profile. I'm going to click create. So that's now created the profile and this is where the measurements will be stored and we can retrieve these at any time. So the next stage is to create the step wedge and this is the step wedge that we're about to print. It goes from pure black to pure white and there's increments in between. You'll notice that the name of the profile is actually printed just underneath the step wedge itself. And you'll also see these three targets. These are used if you want to scan the print rather than measure it with a device. But we're going to be using the device today. So let's go ahead and print this. So I need to open up the print dialog box for Photoshop. And I'm just going to move it to the top, like so. Under Colour Management, I'm going to make sure that Print to Manage Colours is checked or enabled because I want to use the Advanced Black and White Driver. Rendering tent doesn't really matter. Send 16-bit data. I'm not really sure if this actually does anything, but I'm going to enable it anyway. I've never seen any difference. Then I'm going to open up the printer settings. And this is where we need to take notes of what we're actually going to use because we need to use these settings when we actually print the final image with the correction curve. We need to be consistent all the way through the workflow. So under Printer Options, I'm going to choose Printer Settings and make sure that the media type for this paper is Ultra Premium Photo Luster. That's fine. I'm using Photo Blacking. I want Advanced Black and White Driver. And I'm just going to use 1440 for the output. You could use Super Photo if you want. But I'm going to just stick with 1440. And you could use Fine Detail if you really want to be really accurate with this. But this is okay for this test. Under the Advanced Colour Settings, this is for the black and white driver. I like to use the Dark Tone. This is like a gamma correction you'll probably find that dark is very close to gamma 2.2 and that's what I like. And I'm going to leave everything else as default. So I'm going to choose OK. Under the advanced media, because this is a 280 gram paper, it's quite thick actually. So I'm just going to choose wide for the platen gap just to make sure that I don't get any head strikes as it's coming through the printer. Choose OK, click Save, 
and now I'm going to simply print that step wedge. So once the step wedge has printed and dried, then I'll come back and we'll actually measure that with the data color spider print, but I'm going to be measuring it under the Windows operating system. I have had a request if I can just show you how to measure with a data color spider print under Windows. So that's what we'll do as soon as the print has dried and it's ready to be measured. The print has now dried and now it's time to actually measure the patches. And I'm going to be using Windows for this because I've been asked if I can demonstrate it under Windows although the principle is more or less the same if you're using the Mac operating system. But this was a request, so I will do it under Windows. So the first thing that we need to do is open up the spider print software that we've installed. And we need to calibrate the spider print. So go to Tools and choose Calibrate. Then place the spider print on top of the cradle and press the button on the top and that will calibrate the device. Now we can choose OK and now it's time to actually measure the information. So back in the spider print software go to tools and choose measure. Make sure that lab is selected and now we need to create the text file where we want to save this data. So choose export to. And we have to give this a name. So I'm going to name this particular one. Marat underscore B-A-R-Y Barieta underscore 280. That just represents the paper. Press OK. Take the spider print measuring device and place it on the black patch. And then press the button on the top. And you'll see that the values from that measurement appear under the LAB section. We're only going to be rep using the L value, but it does display all three. And it also shows you the density as well. So that's the first patch. I'm simply going to move to the second patch. You can also press the enter key on the keyboard and that's the same as pressing the button on the top. So I'll go to the next patch, enter, enter. And I'm just moving across all of these patches one by one and I'm pressing the enter key on the keyboard or you can press the one on the top and then we're coming up to the final patch which is going to represent paper base white. So once we've done that we now need to press done but before we press done it's recommended that you press the open export because this will then open up the folder to where these measurements are saved. It's not very intuitive in the spider print software as to where this information gets saved to. So I'm going to choose open export and that will just open up a normal Windows Finder program and I can just move that out of the way. Now I can press done. And you'll see that once I've pressed done that box has gone completely. So if you happen to press done before pressing that open export and wondering where's it saved it to or how can I get it back, I have actually written a small batch file for Windows and this is the batch file. And when you double click on this, it actually opens up the correct folder. So you can have this for free and for those that are a little bit wary about batch files, I will show you what's inside it. 
it's just simply a one line command that's opening up Explorer, that's the file explorer and it's simply going to the location as to where that file is saved which is under the app data local data color spider print data and export so if you just double click on the batch file it will run the explorer program and take you straight to that folder so you can use that if you accidentally press done and then can't sort of figure out where the actual file is so this is the file that we've just created so I'm going to double click on that and that shows us the information now we need to extract the first column so personally I like to use notepad plus plus free program and the reason why I like to use this is because because it allows us to press the alt key down and then just copy the first column because that's all that we need so now that we've got this column I'm going to right click and choose copy and now we're going to go back into Photoshop and enter that information into the Paper Grey Curves program I am running Photoshop on the Mac, but the principle would be the same if you're using Windows. So let me just quickly go back to the Mac. And this is where we left off when we printed the step wedge. So here is the Paper Grey Curves interface. We now need to edit this profile, which we do by choosing the pencil icon. In the first column, I'm going to press Paste. And that will paste in that information that we've just copied from that file. In this case, it was on Windows. And I'm going to choose Save. So what we have now is we have a profile with all the relevant information from which we can generate a correction curve. So let me quickly open up a photograph and this is a photograph that we may be printing. On the top of the layer stack, this is where the curve is going to be placed because this is where we want that curve to be presented on. So choose the paper profile. This time choose the curve icon, which opens up the correction curve dialog box. And now it's asking, do we want to place the correction curve in the active document or a new document? Well, as we're going to be printing this image, it would make sense to actually create the curve inside of this document. So I'll press up create. And then we can now see that the correction curve has been created and placed on top of the layer stack. So every time you want to print a photograph on this particular paper, all we have to do now is choose the profile for that paper, press the curve icon, active document and create, and it will create the curve for us. So this is stored in the user's operating system. So this is actually stored on the hard on the hard disk and you can go to the flyout menu and you can actually export the paper profiles because if you end up with a long list of them it might be a good idea to export them once in a while just for safe backup and then you can always re-import them should you want to do so so that's the workflow on how to create a correction curve for the Epson Advanced Black and White driver using the data color spider print to measure the patches and in this instance we actually used that spider print in the Windows 11 operating system. So if anybody has any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments below and until next time thank you very much indeed for watching bye for now.